So today we're going to look at how we can start using Raspberry Pi Pico W and this Pico W Edge and set it up on Windows and then connect to the internet and maybe write a simple program to blink an LED on it. So the first step is to go get a Raspberry Pi Pico W or a Pico W Edge. You can go search on Google for Raspberry Pi Pico. It will take you to the Raspberry Pi website. And right from there, if you hit buy, you will be able to find multiple places where this is available and it is available on Amazon. If you get the WH variant, it comes with four headers soldered on, so it makes your job much easier. That's what it is. So let's do a quick search for the Raspberry Pi Pico and see what it throws up. You go to the raspberrypi.com website. Let's go into the hardware section and see what we can find over there. Now let's see if we can find some information about the Pico right there. And that takes us to the original website we checked out for us to buy it. And as is normal in such situations, when we're starting something new, we should look to find the documentation or the get started documentation available right there on the website. Let's go take a look at the documentation and see what we have. We have the basic specifications up front and then a pinout diagram as well. Some links to design, a little more detail about connectivity and then another pinout diagram of specifications and then we have the documentation which you're interested in which is going to be getting started with the pico connecting to the internet with the pico and then the raspberry pi pico python sdk so our first step will be to try to understand this and to do any of this we're going to first need to install micro python on the raspberry pi pico so that we can do the rest of our code So let's take a look at what we need to do in order to be able to get this connected and MicroPython on it. What we need to do is hold down the boot cell button that's on the Pico and then plug it in. It will be detected like a USB drive into which we can drop the firmware that we're going to download from the website. So now that we have the downloaded firmware, we can drag and drop this file into this drive. Instantly you will detect that Windows is recognizing your device differently and it's going to prompt you for that information as well. As you can see it says it's going to be setting it up in board, setting up the board in FS board and now we should be able to put our Python code on it. And installing MicroPython is as simple as that. For beginners, you can even check if your device has been detected properly by Windows by going to Device Manager and then going into the USB devices and checking for a USB serial device. There we go. So now let's take a look at how to get started with writing our Python code. I'm going to the documentation we saw earlier regarding the Python SDK and I'm going to jump into the IDE section integrated using Thony. This works across the board and it's the simplest way for us to start working with the people. So we basically download it. It works on Linux, Mac and Windows and once you're, once you're installed it, you can actually easily set up your Pico. Uh, you can in, even do the part where it installs the so 
on the firmware on it as well. So let's go ahead and search for it and download it uh, and install it on our computer. So let's go to the Thony website. You will find all three variants right there. We're going to do the Windows 64 bit one. And mostly just go through the defaults for our installation. So once we have it downloaded, we can then open it up. And uh, just follow the options that we're going to see. It's fairly simple to do. Okay, let's look at Tony. Open it up. Let's go. Okay, now we have the Thani window and ideally we should look for preferences or in tools we have options, you open up options and there you have interpreter and now you get to choose from a drop down of existing uh, devices and Pico is one of them so you can choose that and drag and leave the rest as default for it to detect it automatically only if it doesn't do it automatically do we need to worry about it. You can even see on the shell, it says Micro Python and Pico WH. You already know it's the Pico. And here you go. Now, when it's printing hello, it's not using your system's interpreter. So, going further on the documentation, we find a simple Python code available for blinking an LED or the in onboard LED on the Raspberry Pi Pico link to it as well you just need to copy over the code uh, and paste it we're just going to get it to run we're not going to be talking about the program right now but we will talk about this library and we have spoken about it in other videos as well so for now you just copy the program paste it right in and hit play to run it on the people once it runs you can actually see that this onboard led is going to be blinking and that's shown on the next video So let's explore how to get it connected to the internet. If we scroll further down in the documentation, you will see a small chunk of code that talks about connecting to a wireless network. This is a very basic code and doesn't involve disconnections and reconnections, but they do have a slightly larger code beyond it, which has this information. So what we're going to do is in the same way, we're just going to take this code for now. We're not going to analyze it in this video and uh, just put it straight into our editor and then try to run it and see if we get it to work although we do have to make some changes because it looks for the ssid and the password so once we put that into our code we're going to need to change those credentials to match our uh, our local wi-fi network yeah so this might need some editing so once you put that in So there we go. Now that we have our code, you should modify the credentials of the Wi-Fi and then put your credentials in there. So I'm blanking it out for our purpose. And there you go. It says connecting, connecting, and it's connected. And it also gives you the IP. Now you can use this IP for it communicating with the pipe. 